Grace and peace to you, and welcome to worship at Eastminster Presbyterian Church. We're so glad that you could join us this morning as we reflect on the love and grace of God in our lives and our continued desire to be a more loving and grace filled community. Wanted to mention one announcement of the body this morning. On Thursday, uh, we are working to upgrade some of our communication tools. And on Thursday, we uh, sent out an email with our new email service. So if you didn't receive an email uh, about the church bulletin or worship, and you normally would, please let the church office know that you didn't receive it. Make sure we can uh, rectify that. Um, But let us worship God together. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please join me in the call to worship, which is found in your bulletin. Jesus comes alongside us and calls us by name. Come, follow me. A simple call, a hard call, because following requires leaving. And we look around to see who else Jesus could be talking to. And we look around to see the trappings of the life we know. It's hard to leave our nets and walk away from the lake. But we have come this far to this place where we can listen and be transformed. When we pass through deep waters or go through times of fiery trial, 
The Lord our God is with us. Trusting in God, our Redeemer, let us confess our sin. God, it often seems as if the word of the Lord is rare in our days. We confess that we, your servants, may not be listening. We prefer to do what we want, labeling our desires with your name and calling them blessed. We disregard your voice when it comes from unpleasant quarters or through people with whom we disagree. We insist that there is no other way. We shut out and shut down rather than waiting to hear your word. We confess our minds and hearts are often closed, our ears ringing with our own voices. Silence in us every voice but your own, and help us to hear you again. Forgive us, O God. Speak again into our confusion, our brokenness, our darkness, and lead us in your way of grace and truth. Amen. Our righteousness is found in Christ alone, a gift of God by faith. Blessed people of God, believe the good news through the grace of Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Amen. to take a moment to invite any boys and girls just to take a special time to listen to our time together. I've been thinking a little bit about this question this week. I was wondering if you guys had ever thought about how God speaks to us. You see, we hear this story in, this, in a moment. We're going to hear this story about a little boy named Samuel. And Samuel is asleep in the temple. And he hears a voice speak to him. And he gets up and he thinks it's his friend Eli. So he goes and he wakes Eli up and says, Eli, you called me. And Eli says, oh, I didn't, I didn't call you, Samuel. And Eli realizes that God is speaking to this little boy named Samuel. So Samuel goes back to bed. He lays down his head again, and he sleeps. And he hears that voice speak to him, and he wakes up, and he stops, and he listens. I think and I believe that God still speaks us, speaks to us each and every day. But so often we don't stop and listen. You know, God speaks to us through the Bible. When we read our Bible as a family or our individual Bibles, God speaks to us through, our, through the Bible. God also speaks to us through our families. See, this is my family from, it's actually about 10 years ago can see me and my wife Vicki and JD. This was when he was baptized and my parents. God speaks to us through our family, our teachers and our friends. But we have to stop and listen. So my challenge to you guys this week is to stop and listen and see how God is speaking to you. Would you guys please pray with me? Dear Jesus, 
Help us to stop and listen so we may hear of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys for listening. The Old Testament lesson this morning is from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again. Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again, a third time. And he got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening.
Big thank you to the Bells of Eastminster for sharing their gifts with us this morning. A reading from John chapter 1, verses 43 to 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida and the, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him. We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Truly, is, here truly is an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked Jesus, where did you get to know me? Jesus said, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip even called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered him, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, send your Spirit to us that we may discern your word among the words we read today, so that in hearing your word, we be, may be formed to follow Christ, follow Christ into this world. In Jesus' name, amen. First impressions are important. And we all want to make a good impression. I remember a story that went viral on Twitter a few years ago. It was about a young man named Grant. He was about 17 years old, and he went to the hospital, waiting in anticipation for his niece to be born. But he showed up to the hospital looking a little bit different. He looked like he was dressed for prom. And somebody took a photo of him and it went viral. A reporter late, later asked Grant, well, why did you dress up to go to the hospital? He said, I wanted to make a good impression on my newborn niece. And that when she was older and looked back at photos from that day, that she would see how important she was to me, that I took the time for her. But there are times in our lives when impressions don't always go the way that we planned. I'm sure we can all recall a time when we have struggled to connect with someone or someone has misunderstood us because of our background or our experience. The first time I met my wife, Vicki, I did not make a very good impression on her. You see, we had both graduated college that year. We didn't know each other, and we were both looking to start a career. We actually ended up competing for the exact same job. The first time I ever even saw my wife, she was walking out of a meeting in which she found out she did not get this job that she applied for and that I got it. I remember seeing her and immediately wanting to get to know her. She looked at me with a slightly different set of feelings in that moment. Impressions. Impressions are an important thing. 
Our gospel text this morning shows Jesus on day four of a recruiting trip. He is calling people to follow him. He extends an invitation to Philip, who immediately responds to that invitation by following Jesus. Philip shares the good news with Nathanael. Nathanael, we have found the one whom Moses claimed, who Moses wrote about. Nathanael expresses doubts to Philip. Asking the question, can anything good come out of Nazareth? I always think Philip's response is interesting here. He does not try and prove to Nathaniel who Jesus is. He simply invites him to explore his doubt. He says, come and see who I have found. I think this is a beautiful vision of the church that we should all be free to explore our own doubt, and that as a community, we should encourage, another, encourage one another in the best way we can to come and see. The two go off to see Jesus. Jesus sees them, as I picture it, on the road, and Jesus immediately does something here. He affirms Nathanael's identity, saying, this is a true Israelite. This is the only time the Gospel of John uses the word Israelite in all of this book. And he is describing Nathanael in a very specific way. He is calling him a righteous believer. The believer that is described in Psalm 32, who is blessed by God, who is righteous and upright in heart. Jesus is giving him a very high compliment in this moment. Nathanael is so taken aback by these words that he immediately recognizes the good that has come out of Nazareth. And he calls Jesus the Son of God. The Son of God and the King of Israel. Jesus blesses Nathanael's faith and tells him that even in that doubt and that faith that we all have, it will grow and he will see new and surprising things. You see, Jesus has a knack for surprising people. Theologian and pastor and author Nadia Boats Weber shares her story, her story about how she was called into ministry in her book called Pastrix, The Cranky, Beautiful Faith of a Sinner and a Saint. You see, Nadia ended up in ministry quite by accident. She was a stand-up comic in the early 90s in Colorado when a mutual friend introduced her to a nice man. She met this nice man at a bar, and at first she didn't even know how to take him. She had never dated anyone who was so nice and kind to her. She actually writes that she doubted his sincerity. And then her radar went up even more when she found out he was, of all things, a Lutheran pastor. You see, at this time, Nadia had been struggling with her faith. And she took the moment to express her doubts. And he just listened and encouraged her to continue her search. They eventually ended up getting married years later. But throughout most of, through all of Nadia's life, she has been struggling with addiction. And through AA, she met some very close friends. One of them was named PJ. PJ was also a local comic in Colorado, as well as a PhD student, and somebody who struggled with addiction and depression and thoughts of self-harm. One day, Nadia's phone rang. It was a fellow comic and friend of PJ's. 
He said to Nadia on the phone, it is about PJ. She knew immediately what he meant, that PJ had lost his battle. This friend, Sean, was calling on behalf of a group. They wanted to know if Nadia would lead a memorial service, a remembrance service for PJ. They didn't know who else could do it. You see, at that point in their life, Nadia was the only religious person that they knew. She writes that the memorial service took place on a crisp fall day in a comedy club in downtown Denver. She writes that it was a full house. The AA group was there, the Denver comics, the comedy club staff, and the local academics from the university. She writes, they were my people. Giving PJ's eulogy, I realized that perhaps I was supposed to be their pastor. It's not that I felt pious or even nurturing. It's that there in that underground room, I looked around. I saw more pain and more questions and loss than anyone, including myself, knew what to do with it. And I saw God. God. Right there. Standing along the wall. With the comics. With arms crossed. As if their snarky remarks to each other would keep those embarrassing emotions away. God. God present among the cynics. Jesus surprised Nadia. Nadia took the time to listen and Jesus surprised her with a calling. You see, God will surprise us through small ordinary moments in our life. But only if we take the time. If we take that extra second to ask a coworker about a sick parent. Or that moment to call someone we know that is feeling lonely. Or that brief second to put our cell phone away so we can be fully present with our spouse, with our children. And yes, any teenagers listening, you can even do this for your parents. We can sense God's presence when we pause and listen. A few years ago, I myself was surprised at a moment when I heard Jesus. I heard Jesus speaking to me through a voice of a fourth grader. You see, I was getting ready to lead a, a series on the apostles. I had prayerfully prepared this series. I had found a curriculum. And I was modifying it so that it was age appropriate for fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. The night came where I was kicking off this series. The kids had gathered in a room. We had a bunch of fun that night, and I started to teach. And on the screen, I had a list of the names of the apostles. When one student in that room raised her hand and asked, why aren't there any girl apostles? It was an innocent question, but a God-surprising moment for me. I ended up taking that week to rewrite that series, taking the care to highlight all the faithful women and the men who followed Jesus throughout the Gospels. That was Jesus speaking to me in that moment through a fourth grader. But I could have also ignored her 
and just moved on. But something said, stop and listen. Jesus who surprised Nathaniel. Jesus who surprised Nadia. And Jesus who will surprise us if we choose to listen for him in our lives. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, may we be open to the movement of your spirit in our lives. May we be, hear you speaking through the small, ordinary moments of our life so that we would be more attuned to you. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together by reading the words from Romans chapter 8. We believe there is no con condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for we know that through we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to God's purposes. We are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. God has showered us with good gifts. In response to this, in response to God's love, let us, give, let us give all who we are in return. Our hearts, our minds, our energies, and our resources. Thanks be to God. Throughout this week, I'd con 
encourage you that if you do have prayer concerns or things you would like uh, us to pray for as a community, to contact the church office and we will, we will certainly be in prayer for those things. This morning, we're asking for prayer for Michael Campbell, for Cade Curran, continued prayers for Dee Hoyt in her recovery, for Christy and Justin um, on the loss of a baby, continued prayers for Judy Lightfoot, for Alan McIntosh, for Steve Moore, for Bob Smith, and for Don Wonders. We also extend the sympathy of the church to the family and friends of Andrew Weber, who passed away. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, you call us for, to work for justice. And you call the justice to roll down like waters and righteousness to flow like an ever flowing stream. On this Sunday, we pause and remember the life and legacy of Martin Luther King Jr. God, we ask you to help us to embody the justice and righteousness that he sought in this country. Help us to embody the dream of the beloved community. Of a day when justice is reality for all Americans, not just a few. Inspire us, O God, by his example and others' examples. And by the power of your spirit at work within us to live in solidarity with all who have been marginalized in our world. Give us ears, O God, to hear their cries, to listen. And God, give us hearts that move us to respond to that need. Indeed, God, we are feeling tumultuous days of political and social reckoning. Give us courage to pursue accountability. And courage to recognize our own complicity in racism that has warped our common life. Animate courage in us, O God, so that we might seek to confront realities that deform and deface our country and participate in your reconciling justice, O God. Hear our prayers, O God. Hear our prayers for peace in our nation and in our world. We especially pray for peace in the days ahead as we navigate transition in the nation's leadership. Grant all our elected leaders wisdom and courage and patience to work together for the common good and restore a spirit of partnership in our land. And God, we especially also think of all of those who are in harm's way. We pray for their protection, O God. And God, this day we lift up to you several concerns from our body. We think of Michael and Cade, Dee and Judy and Alan and Steve, and Bob, and Don. And God, we also lift up to you those who are grieving, those who have experienced loss. We think of Christy and Justin, 
May your spirit be with them in this difficult time, O God. May friends and family comfort them. And God, for the family and friends of Andrew Weber, may they experience your love and grace in their life. God, our help in times of trouble. We continue to pray for the global community as it grapples with this pandemic. We pray that you would give each of us determination to take personal responsibility for measures that protect us all. We pray especially for the well-being of those hardest hit by this. And pray for those in leadership in our community, our states, and our nation. That may, they may negotiate ways to aid those most afflicted. We pray for our church and our community. Help, it to be, help us to be beacons of your love and grace in this world. And it is in that spirit that we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. Amen. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for us all. Now may the God of justice and peace sanctify you entirely so that we might lift up the brokenhearted and stand with the oppressed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.